और वाइडर्स के नाम होंगे तो सो इन दिस वीडियो इंशाल्लाह हम विल बी सॉल्विंग थ्री मोर क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द पास्ट पेपर्स ऑन रिलेटेड टू वेलोसिटी एंड होपफुली दीस क्वेश्चंस आर गोइंग टू हेल्प यू एक्चुअली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रिवर क्रॉसिंग प्रॉब्लम हियर राइट एज द नेम ऑफ द वीडियो आल्सो इंप्लाइज सो वी विल बी डूइंग थ्री मोर क्वेश्चंस ऑन द रिवर क्रॉसिंग प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ रिलेटिव वेलोसिटी सो दैट यू हैव अ वेरी क्लियर आईडिया ऑफ हाउ टू अप्रोच क्वेश्चंस ऑन रिवर क्रॉसिंग इन द एग्जामिनेशन सो बिफोर वी मूव ऑन let's very quickly review what we studied in the previous video the first thing that we studied was that in river crossing problems uh, we obviously have three components that is the three components of the relative velocity equation the first thing is obviously the direction in which the river is moving and the speed in which the river is moving so that is uh, the velocity of water vw it's the first component is velocity of water right uh, the second component is the relative velocity that is the the velocity of the object that is crossing the river with respect to the velocity of water so this is v o slash w that is velocity of the object with respect to water and what is this going to tell us this is going to tell us the course the object has to take right and the starting velocity is going to be the magnitude of the relative velocity so what does this tell us this tells us the course the object has to take in order to reach the desired destination and obviously in that case we'll have to know the angle that the uh, object makes in the beginning as it starts starts its motion and uh, whether it's whether uh, the object is steered in an upward direction uh, sorry in an upstream direction or a downstream direction because these are the two directions of a river uh, in river crossing problems so uh, when we are talking about the course we we'll have to mention the angle as well as the direction and the directions in river crossing problems are either downstream that is along with the flow of the water or upstream that is against the flow of water the second thing that the relative velocity is going to tell us the uh, is the speed with which the object will start its motion will start its motion and i told you in the last video that the relative velocity of an object in water is referred to in the examinations as velocity of object in still water and i also explained the logic behind this nomenclature and i told you that the reason behind the use of still water here is uh, because uh, whenever we have relative velocity that uh, that is we have that whenever we are studying the relationship between the velocities of two objects we have to take one of the objects as a reference point and the object that we have taken as a reference is assumed to be at zero velocity and since here this is a reference object that is water is the reference therefore the velocity of water is taken to be zero for just that period of time that is for just the calculation of relative velocity so we have relative velocity we have the velocity of water and the third component is the true velocity of the object and i told you that the true velocity of the object is given by the line connecting the starting point and the destination of the object right so now let's move on with the question i'll write the question down uh, this question doesn't really have any diagram so uh, i'll just write this question down and then we'll solve this this question is from uh, october november 2004 paper 2 question 8 so we have a motor boat right 
A motor boat travels in a straight line across a river which flows at 3 meters per second. So we know the velocity of water here between straight parallel banks. which are 200 meters apart. Okay. The motor boat uh, which has a top speed of 6 meters per second in still water. So we have been given the magnitude of the relative velocity as well. Why I am talking about the magnitude? Because we don't know the direction yet. Comma travels directly from a point point A on one bank to point B one fifty meters downstream of A. on the opposite bank. Assuming that the motor boat is traveling at top speed find to the nearest second The time it takes to travel from A to B. So the first step in all questions of relative velocity will be that you will draw a diagram first so that you can visualize the situation and scenario of the question better. So in this question, what do we have? We have two parallel bands. And these banks are 200 meters apart. So this distance is 200 meters. Now I have a point here A from where my motor boat is going to start, start its motion. And it has to go to a point B. Now where is point B? Point B is 200 meters downstream of point A. So Sorry, 150 meters downstream of point A. So, this is somewhere point B is going to be and the distance between A and B is going to be 150 meters. Okay. Water is flowing at a velocity of, velocity of water is 3 meters per second. Now, let's see. This is my starting point A. This is my ending point B. So, uh... The line connecting A and B is going to be the direction of the true velocity of the object. That is velocity of the boat, the true velocity of the boat. Now because I want to go from A to B, obviously this is not the direction that I would be taking. Because if I take the, uh, the direction, uh, this direction which is represented by the VB arrow, water is going to push me and I will be ending somewhere probably here. And this is not what I want. So essentially, I should set course a bit to the left. Maybe something like this. Okay, I'll, I'll make it from this. Maybe something like this. So that water can push me here and I can get my relative velocity. So this is going to be the direction in which I'll steer my boat. And we know that the direction in which the boat is steered or in other words the course that the object has to take is represented by the relative velocity. So we have velocity of boat with respect to water and this is given as 6 meters per second. Okay, so now let's use the relative velocity equation and see what we can do. So according to the relative velocity equation, velocity of the boat with respect to water is given to velocity of the boat, take away velocity of water. 
So the question here asks us to find the time to the nearest second that the boat takes to travel from A to B. So for this, if I know the distance A and B between A and B, and if I know the speed VB, I can simply do my division and find out the time. So let's do one thing first. Let's find the distance between A and B. So how can we do this? We know that uh, these two bands are 200 meters apart. So if I draw a straight line from A to the opposite bank, obviously this is also going to be 200 meters. And we know that point B is 150 meters downstream of point A. So this distance from here up till this point is 150 meters. This gives us a right angle triangle. And therefore, by using Pythagoras theorem, we can find the distance AB. So the distance AB can be given by 20 squared, sorry, 200 squared, add 150 squared. I'll do my calculation. 200 squared, add 150 squared. The answer is 250 meters. Now I need the second component in order to find the time and that is the speed Vb. For this I am going to use the relative velocity equation. Now I know that Vb slash w is 6 meter per second and I know that V uh, uh, and I know the velocity of water. So if I rearrange this equation I send this part here. So I have velocity of the relative velocity of the boat and velocity of water is going to give me Vb. This means that if this is my direction of relative velocity, which is at 6 meters per second, and this is the velocity of water, which is 3 meters per second, I am doing simple vector addition using the tip to tail method. Then this is going to be my velocity of the boat that is the true velocity of the boat okay so uh, there's one thing at least one thing that we need to know before we can perform this uh, calculation and that is we need to know one of the angles uh, so if somehow I can find either this angle or this angle I'll be able to do my working and the easier angle to find is this angle why? Because this angle that I have just colored is common between this triangle of velocities. See, there we, have, we now have two triangles with us. One is the triangle of velocities that I have redrawn here as well. See, here is this 6 meter per second speed. Here is the velocity of water as well. And here is the true velocity. So this is the velocity of, sorry, this is the triangle of velocity. There is an other triangle as well and that is the triangle of distances. So, we can see here very plainly, this is 150 meters, this is 200 meters, this is the line that connects A to the to exactly opposite bank. So, this is the triangle of distances. The angle that I have, cover, uh, that I have colored is basically common between both the angle, uh, the triangle of velocities and the triangle of distances. And we know every single thing about the triangle of distances. Therefore, we can find this angle very easily by using simple trigonometric ratios. So this angle will come out to be tan inverse of 200 upon 150. So this angle comes out to be tan inverse of 200 upon 150. I'm not evaluating this right now. I'll enter the exact values in my calculator so that the answer that comes out is not affected by any premature rounding off. Fine. So I know this angle now. Now, in order to find VB, I can probably, I can use the cosine rule. So what I'll do is, according to the cosine rule, velocity of B squared, add 3 squared, which is here, uh, subtract, 2bb3 squared 
sorry uh, there is no squared here times cos of this angle here and this angle is this whole thing so I'll enter tan inverse of 200 upon 150 is equal to VB squared let's very quickly review the cosine rule if I have a side A and I have a side B and I have a side C and this angle is theta then this side C would be given by C squared is equal to A squared add B squared take away 2AB cos theta so what do we have here we have this thing just a second I have done a mistake here this is 6 squared I have this here I have this here and I have this here and uh, the angle that I know is the angle between VW and VB so I can use the cosine rule through v, uh, VW and VB and this is how my equation is going to turn out to be fine so let's carry out with the calculations now VB squared add 9 take away ok I'll be more direct I'll send this to the other side so this becomes VB squared take away this becomes 6 6 VB cos of tan inverse 200 upon 150 is equal to 6 square take away 3 square so that is 36 minus 9 which is 27 now I'll bring this 27 here as well so I have VB squared take away 6 VB cos of I'll, I'll just evaluate this right now so cos of tan inverse 200 upon 150 is actually 0 0.6 fine so this is 0 0.6 this whole thing na? 0 0.6 so this becomes 0 0.6 minus 27 is equal to 0 vb squared 6 times 0 0.6 is equal to 3.6 minus 3.6 vb minus 27 is equal to 0 so I now have a quadratic equation in VB. I can simply use a quadratic formula and find VB. Or to make things simpler for myself, I can say that let VB is equal to Y. Then Y squared minus 3.6Y minus 27 is equal to 0. Now using the quadratic formula, Y is equal to negative B plus minus B squared minus 2 a C upon 2A and I'll enter this in my calculator negative 3.6 whole squared minus 2 A negative 27 upon 2 so one value of y comes out to be 5.891454509 5 and the other value comes out to be negative 2.29 something and we'll reject this value why because the speed cannot be negative so this is my VB VB is 5.8914 whatever meters per second now in order to find the time I need to divide my distance by the speed distance by the speed in order to get the time so this would be the distance we had found out was 250 upon this velocity 5.8914 and the answer is coming out to be 42.43 seconds since the answer is required to the nearest second <coughs> my answer would be 42 seconds Let's very quickly uh, review what we did in this question. The first thing that we did was that we used, uh, we constructed two triangles. 
we can do it on one diagram and we can do it on two diagrams as well. I prefer to do it in one diagram only. First triangle is a triangle of distances. And the triangle of distances is made by considering the distance between A and B, which is this diagonal line. I'll call it this diagonal line. The second line is drawn between B and the point exactly opposite to A on the opposite bank, which is 150 meters. We know this is given in the question. And the third line, obviously, is a line connecting A to a point opposite to point A on the opposite bank. And we know that that distance is 200 meters. Then, using the Pythagoras theorem, we found the distance AB, which came out to be 250 meters. Now, in order to find the time taken by the boat, to go from A to B, we need to divide the, the, the distance to 50 meters by the speed VB in order to get the time. So in order to find the speed VB, we'll now construct another triangle and that is the triangle of velocities. We know that since the object wants to go from A to B, the direction of the true velocity will be the line connecting A and B. Then since we want to go from A to B, the ship, sorry, the motorboat must be steered in a direction which is upstream to B. Because if I steer in the direction of B, it's, uh, my boat is going to be pushed further downstream of B, which I don't want. So I drew this arrow here, which is upstream of B. Why is it upstream of B? So that the velocity of water, which is represented by this segment here, the velocity of water can push my boat in a way that it ends up at B. So now I have my uh, other triangle as well. That is the triangle of uh, velocities. The triangle of velocities is now resolved using trigonometry. And the starting step was to evaluate this angle using cosine rule. Sorry, using simple trigonometry. Then, after this angle was found, we applied the cosine rule to this triangle. We used this side, the velocity at this side, sorry, which was 3 meters per second. Then we used VB, which is unknown. And this is the angle that we use. And we equate it to 6 meters per second on the other side. The ultimate result would be a quadratic equation, which will be solved, and we will be getting VB. Dividing the distance that we had obtained by VB is going to give us the time, which is the requirement of this question. I hope this is clear. Let's move to the next question. Right. So, for the next question, we have a diagram here first. I'll draw the diagram and then I'll write down the question. We have this river. The two banks of the river are 72 meters apart and four points are given. There is this point A here. We have a point B which is exactly opposite of B which means that the line connecting A and B would be would make a right angle with the bank. Then we have a point C which is downstream of B and then we have a point D which is further downstream of C. And another thing that's been given to us is the distance between A and D. That means this distance here. This is given as 100 meters. Fine. And there's another line which is drawn connecting A and C. Another thing that's shown on the diagram is the velocity of water which is 2 meters per second. Right, so the question now. This is a nice long question, but it will clear your concepts very well. So we have a river, which is 72 meters wide, as we can see here. Okay. A river, 72 meters wide between 
parallel banks with a speed of 2 meters per second. Right. Three boats, each of whose speed in still water is 2.5 meter per second. That means all the three boats have the same velocity relative to water. Leave A to cross the river. So, the first part of this question is that the first boat is steered directly towards B. So, if it's steered directly towards B, what should come in your mind? That the direction of the relative velocity is the line connecting A and B, right? Because I told you that the direction in which a boat is steered is the direction of the relative velocity. So if it's steered in a direction from A to B, obviously it's not going to end up at B. It's going to end up at some point downstream of B. So the question tells us, uh, which is the point on the bank directly opposite of A, as we can see and lands at C. Right. So, the direction of the relative velocity is the line connecting A and B. And the direction of the true velocity is the line connecting A and C. Because you have been told that the boat is steered in the direction directly towards B but ends up at C. So, the first part, uh, the question here is, Find the time taken for the journey. Find the time taken for the journey and the distance AC. So it's interesting now. Let's see. Okay, I'll uh, I'll write all the questions first, and then we'll do uh, each of them. The second part tells us that there's a second boat which is steered at an angle alpha. I cannot uh, make alpha here. I'll make alpha later with the bank at A and arrives at B. Right. So, if the boat is starting from A and ending at B, it means that the line connecting A and B is the direction of the true velocity of the boat. And obviously, the boat would have been steered upstream of point A so that because of the push of the water, it can finally end up at point B. So what we have to do is, we have to first find alpha and the speed at which the boat travels to B. Which means that we have to find the uh, magnitude of the true velocity. The third part. The third boat is steered at an angle beta. I can't make beta here as well. With the bank at A and arrives at D where AD is equal to 100 meters as shown in the diagram. We have to find the angle beta. 
right so first let's make the alphas and betas so here is alpha here is alpha here is beta fine the first part the boat is steered directly towards b that means that if this is a and this is b this is going to be the direction of the velocity of the boat with respect to water and this boat lands at c so here is c Now we know the magnitude of the relative uh, of the relative velocity that is 2.5 meter per second. Fine. <coughs> Since the boat ends up at C, the line connecting A and C is gonna be the true the direction of the true velocity of the boat, which we don't know. And obviously, now in order to complete this triangle, obviously the line that connects B and C. Would be the velocity of water. We can uh, verify this in, a, in another way. B B slash W is equal to B B take away B W. So in order to find B B, which is essential if we have to find the time taken by the boat to travel from A to B, uh, A to C. Sorry, I have to shift this to the other side. So this becomes V B slash W add B W is equal to V B. So here is my vector of uh, v uh, of the relative velocity, and when we'll add v w to it, this is how the addition will take place, and a c would be the resultant vector produced. Now we know the velocity of water as well. The velocity of water is uh, two meters per second. So this is two meters per second. So this is my triangle of velocities. Using this triangle of velocities. Because this is a right angle triangle, there are a number of things I can find out. I can find out this angle, I can find out this angle, I can also find out velocity of B. So we can find the true velocity of B by simply using the Pythagoras theorem. So by Pythagoras theorem, velocity of B would be given by 2.5 squared add 2 squared and the answer is 2.5 squared add 2 squared square root of 41 upon 2 meters per second for now we'll keep the exact value with us right now in order to find the time we need to know the distance AC and we have been asked to calculate this distance as well but the only thing that we know is that the distance AB is 72 meters. We don't know any angle. We don't know any other side because uh, through which we can find AC. So what we can do is that we can use my our angle of, uh, sorry, our triangle of velocities to evaluate one of the angles. And once one of the angles is calculated, we can use trigonometry to find the distance AC. So let's uh, find out this angle. We'll say, how will we represent a working now? We will tell the examiner that using the triangle of velocities, angle BAC is equal to tan inverse of 2.5 upon Okay, which is coming out to be 2.5 upon 2. Now I'll write a very big value here so that the risk of uh, getting an incorrect answer due to premature rounding off is minimized. Fine. So now we know this angle. That is this angle here. This is 51.340 blah blah blah. Now, the side AC can be found by using the uh, we have 72 here, which is opposite 
and this is the hypotenuse by taking the sine of 51.3 so the side uh, sine of 51.3401715 degrees is equal to 72 upon AC so AC would be 72 upon sine of 51.3401975 so I have 72 upon sine of answer which is coming out to be 92.2 meters correct to three significant figures so we have found the distance AC this is 92.2 meters to three significant figures now in order to time find the time taken I need to divide this distance by this velocity so if I divide this by square root of 41 upon 2 my answer is going to come out to be exactly 28.8 seconds So that's how you will do the first part of this question. In the second part what happens is, oh, alright, I'll just clear the screen. In the second part, what happens is that the boat is steered at an angle alpha so that it can end up at B. So angle alpha would be somewhere upstream of B, right? Because only if the boat is steered in this direction, the push of water, this would be angle alpha obviously, the push of the water is going to make the boat end up at point B. So the line connecting A and B this time would be the direction of the true velocity. So this would be VB and this is the direction in which the boat is steered which is the direction of the relative velocity and this is 2.5 meters per second. Now in the previous example I showed you how the velocity of water gets added to the relative velocity in order to give us the true velocity of the boat. So this is what's going to happen. This is velocity of water, which is 2 meters per second. We know this angle, 90 degrees. Fine. So again, we can first find, what have, what have we been asked? We have been asked to find angle alpha and the speed at which the boat travels to be. That is this speed. This speed can be simply found using Pythagoras theorem. So we'll tell the examiner that by Pythagoras theorem, VB is equal to square root of 2.5 squared take away 2 squared. Why take away? Because this is the hypotenuse this time. So the answer comes out to be 2.5 squared take away 2 squared it is 1.5 meters per second now in order to find angle alpha if I can find this angle which is actually this angle and subtract this by whole of this 90 degrees I can get alpha so for this angle it is simply a sine inverse of 2 upon 2.5 and angle alpha would be 90 degrees take away sine inverse of 2 or 2 upon 5. So we have our answer coming out to be 36.9 degrees correct to one decimal place. Remember that answers in degrees need to be given correct to one decimal place. So we have done the second part is well. <coughs>
this was a very simple part the last part now okay so in the last part what's happening is that there's a third boat which is steered at an angle of beta from uh, with the bank at a and arrives at d so in order to for the boat to end up at d it should make it should set course somewhere like this so that it can be pushed by the water and end up at d and we have been told that this angle is beta so let's see what we can do now now here we can make a triangle of distances first why because we know that the distance ad is 100 meters and if i draw a line from a exactly opposite to the other bank this distance is 72 meters so this gives me my triangle of distances using my triangle of distances i can find out uh this length as well that is if it's relevant the reason why i have drawn the triangle of distances is so that i can find this angle here this actually this angle so how can this be found this is actually sine inverse of 72 upon 100 fine let's draw the triangle of velocities now so for for the triangle of velocities in this case the line connecting a and d is the direction of the true velocity which is the velocity of the boat fine then this true velocity is obtained by adding the relative velocity and the velocity of water so this is my relative velocity at magnitude of 2.5 and this is my velocity of water at a magnitude of 2 right and the angle that the relative velocity makes to the bank is beta and this angle here is you have calculated this This is sine inverse of seventy-two upon hundred. Okay. So let's see what we can do. In order to find beta, I can use this angle here, and I can use the sine rule to find this angle, and then. do some subtraction or addition let's see see one thing that very we can very clearly see is that the velocity of water and the bank are parallel to each other so this angle is actually the same as this angle because these are alternate angles so this angle is also equal to sine inverse 72 upon 100 using the sine rule if i can find out this angle which is sandwiched between the relative velocity and the true velocity of the boat i can find out uh this angle and add it to the whole thing to get beta so let's move ahead according to the sine rule i'll just write down this angle first this sine inverse of 72 upon 100 and that comes out to be Forty-six point zero five four four eight. So this part of beta, this red part of beta, is forty-six point zero five four four eight. Now apply the sine rule. So two point five upon sine of forty-six point zero five four four eight. Is equal to two upon. Let's call this angle theta, sine theta. Fine. 
So 2.5 sin theta is equal to 2 sin 46.05448. Now try to enter the exact value of this angle in your calculator so that you can get exact answers. So theta would come out to be sine inverse of 2 sine let's enter the exact value here upon 2.5 so the answer comes out to be 2 times sine of sine inverse of uh, 72 upon 100 upon 2.5 And this angle theta comes out to be 35.16969. So adding this to this is going to give me the value of beta. Beta is equal to um, 81.2 degrees corrects to uh, one decimal place. Fine. So we have done this question now. There's one more question that I want to do in this video. And that is, yeah. Question number 21 of the book that I'm using right now. Fine, so this is a long question again. I'll clear the screen completely. So, firstly, there's a diagram in this question. We have our river, and the distance between the banks is 160 meters. The water is flowing at a speed of 2.5 me 2.4 meters per second. We have a point A here. There is a dotted line connecting the two banks. And obviously this makes a right angle triangle. This makes a right angle, sorry. And then we have an arrow here which says 5.6 meters per second at an angle alpha. And then we have a point B here, and the distance between this right angle spot and B is 120 meters. Fine. So now let's write down the question. The question says that the diagram shows a river is 160 meters wide flowing at a speed of 2.4 meters per second between straight parallel Banks, a boat crosses the river from a point A on one bank to a point B on the opposite bank. which is 120 meters downstream. The speed of the boat in still water is 5.6 meters per second. Right, that means this angle alpha is actually the angle of the 
relative velocity. In order to travel directly, from A to B, the boat is steered in a direction making an angle alpha to the bank as shown. Find number one the value of alpha. Number two the resultant speed of the boat that is the true velocity. Number three, the time taken for the crossing. Now these three parts have 10 marks. There's another part of, to this question which is the boat then makes a return journey from B to A. Find the resultant speed of the boat on this return journey. Actually, I have this part, this second part of this question is of 6 marks alone. The reason I have chosen this question is because of this second part only. So anyway, let's get started. The first thing that we have to find out is the value of angle alpha. Okay, so let's first draw our triangle of distances to find the distance between A and B. So this would be, here we go. This line has a distance of 160 meters and this is 120 meters. So simply by using Pythagoras theorem, we'll get the length AB as the sum as the square root of the sums of the squares of 160 and 120 which is 200 meters fine now this angle of distances this triangle of distances can also help us to find this angle right here and this would be tan inverse of 160 upon 120 Fine. So let's see. If I make an angle of a, a triangle of velocities here only, so this is what I'll be getting. This is my relative velocity. This would be my true velocity, and this would be my velocity of the water. Okay, I'll just uh, do some alteration to, to this diagram. I'll make alpha a bit steeper. Because this is nevertheless a sketch, so it's, this can't be inaccurate. Let's say this is alpha. And this is 5.6 meters per second. So this is how my relative velocity goes. This is how my true velocity goes, which is the resultant velocity, V, B. This is V, B slash W. And this line would be B, uh, W, which is 2.5 meters per second, 2.4 meters per second. Fine. We have calculated this angle, right? Now that, uh, and this is equal to tan inverse of 160 upon 120. And I'll enter this exact value in the calculator for making any calculations. So now, in order to find B, B, uh, which is the resultant speed of the boat what I can do is I can use the cosine rule again the way we did in the first question of this video so what will happen is that V B squared add V W squared minus 2 times 
V B V W. Let's call this angle uh, delta for now. Cos delta is equal to V B slash W. Plugging in the values now. We don't know V B squared. So let's say that V B is equal to Y. So we have Y squared. Add 2.4 squared minus 2y times 2.4 cos of in place of delta we can write down tan inverse of 160 upon 120 which is equal to 5.6 squared fine let's move ahead so we have y squared the square of 2.4 happens to be 5.76 add 5.76 minus okay I'll do some manipulation here 2 times 2.4 times cos of tan inverse of 160 upon 120 so this comes out to be 2.88 minus 2.88 y is equal to 5.6 squared which is 31.36 fine let's send it to the other side to get a simple quadratic equation in y so y squared take away 2.88 y and uh, take away 25.6 is equal to 0 now I can solve this quadratic equation which would give me y is equal to negative negative 2.88 plus minus square root of minus 4 1 negative 25.6 upon 2a I'll enter this in my calculator negative negative 2.88 add negative 2.88 whole squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 25.6 upon 2. So one value of y comes out to be 6.70057 and the other value comes out to be negative 3.820 will reject this value. Fine. So we know that the resultant speed of the boat is equal to 5 point sorry 6.70 meters per second correct to three significant figures now remember this question says resultant speed if the question had been to tell the resultant velocity you would be stating the angle and the direction of the resultant speed as well fine so now let's come to calculation of alpha so again we can see that velocity of water and the bank are parallel to each other so this part of alpha is actually equal to delta now using sine rule I can find this angle out and let's call this angle theta and add it to delta in order to get the whole of alpha so I can tell the examiner that alpha is equal to theta plus delta because these are notations that I have taken myself so I need to define these to the examiner fine so the cosine rule goes something like the cosine rule will be used with the triangle of velocity so it's 5.6 upon sine of tan inverse 160 upon 120 which would be equal to 2.4 upon sine theta okay so Theta is equal to 2.4 sine of tan inverse 160 upon 120 upon 5.6. There's one thing that we have forgotten here, and that is to put a sine inverse behind all this. So this is sine inverse of this whole thing right 
So this is sine inverse of 2.4, sine of tan inverse of 160 upon 120. Okay, upon 5.6 bracket close. Okay, I have sine inverse. And theta comes out to be 20 point. 120.051 degrees and we can now finally uh, state the value of alpha alpha is equal to theta which is 20.051 and delta and delta was tan inverse of 160 upon 120 so if i add tan inverse of 160 upon 120 i'll get the value of alpha as 73.2 degrees correct to one decimal place right now i can very easily find the time taken for the crossing because i know the distance a b from the triangle of distances i simply have to divide it by the resultant speed remember i'll use the exact value i'll not use the rounded off value to find the time so i'll use 200 divided by uh, oh i've cleared this uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, here it is. 6.70057 and the time is 29.8 seconds. Okay, now the other part of the question. The main part, the reason for the choice of this question and that, that is the return journey of the moon. Now what happens is that the boat is making a return journey. This means that the direction of the true velocity would be this. Here is B, here is A. Water is still flowing in this direction and the magnitude of the relative velocity is still going to be 5.6. But this time, the boat is traveling upstream. Why? Because this direction is downstream. Huh? But this time, when it's traveling from B to A, the movement is upstream. So, how should my object uh, take its course in order to end up in this way? This is VB. Now, let's do some trial and error here. If my object moves in this way, that is, if I steer my boat in this direction, what will happen is, water is going to push it this way. So this is something that can't be taken. So what if this is the direction I take? If this is the direction I take, that is if this is the direction of the relative velocity, then the push of the water is going to get me to A. So this is the velocity of water this time. This would be my direction of the relative velocity. And this would be my true velocity. Right. So this is 2.4. And this is uh, 5.6. We have to find the speed of the boat on the return journey. No? So if somehow I can find this angle or this angle or any of the angles, I can then use the cosine rule to find VB in this case. So what can we do? Let's uh, put this in context here. I'll clear this diagram, the original diagram, and I'll do my working here only. Right. So this distance is 160 meters. This is my direction of uh, the true speed. This is how my boat should set course. That is, this would be the direction of the relative velocity. And this is the velocity of water. Fine. So, is there any way I can find any of the angles? Let's see. 
if I draw a line here, then I know that the distance from A between A to B in this way, uh, the, the horizontal distance between A and B is 120 meters. The vertical distance between A and B is 160 meters. So I can find this angle using trigonometry. Okay. If this angle is found using trigonometry, how is this of any significance? I can draw a line here as well. This angle here and this angle here are alternate angles. And this angle plus this angle, which is obviously 90 degrees, is going to give me this whole angle, which can then be used to do my calculations. So, this angle comes out to be tan inverse of 120 upon 160. And this whole angle becomes 90 degrees plus tan inverse of 120 upon 160. So now let's apply the cosine rule. This is VB at 2.4 meters per second. This is VB slash W at 5.6 meters per second. So the cosine rule will be applied between this vector and this vector and equated to the relative velocity. I'll uh, clear the screen underneath this as we do our work. So we have VB squared, sorry, this is VW, VW squared, add VB squared, take away two times VW, VB, cos of 90 degrees plus tan inverse. 120 upon 160 and this would be VB slash W squared. Now since we have to find VB, let's call VB as Z. The reason I'm using Z is because I had used Y when uh, I was doing my calculation here. So I need to use a different symbol this time. So plugging in the values minus 2 times 2.4 Z. I'll just find this out. Enter this in your calculator and we can find this out. So cos of 90 degrees plus tan inverse of 120 upon 160. This is negative 3.5. And we here have 5.6 squared. Fine. So I now have 2.4 square, add z squared, take away negative 2, 2.4, and negative 3 upon 5. This becomes 2.88 z. Negative 5.6 squared is equal to 0. I finally get a quadratic equation. This is z squared minus 2.88 z and then 2.4 squared minus 5.6 squared is equal to negative 25.6 is equal to 0. Fine. So Let's do our calculation. Negative, so z is equal to negative negative 2.88 uh, plus minus negative 2.88 squared minus 4 well we have done some error we have definitely done some done some error because the answer is coming out to be the same as the previous one so let's see where is the error that we have made 
Okay, there is absolutely no error. The answers will be the same as we obtained from the for the pre previous equation. But this time we'll have to reject the positive value. This is very interesting. Why is this very interesting? Because this time the direction is reversed. Right? So the answers that we'll get will be the same. That is 6.70057 and negative 3.820. This time we have to reject the positive answer because the direction is reversed. So this would be my answer this time. 3.82 meters per second. I hope this is clear. If there are any questions regarding the river crossing problems, you can ask me uh, in the comments or through Facebook or whatever source you need to do. So then assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We'll start with the wind crossing problems in the next in the next class.